Hi, I'm Gavin. So we looked at the Pentax uh, Super ME, it's a great um, electronic sort of non-autofocus camera that they made. Now, I sort of left it with that. I just thought I was really happy with the Super ME, so I didn't buy any more of the Pentax sort of manual cameras. I sort of jumped into the realms of their autofocus cameras. Now, for years, I think 21 years, there was a camera called the Pentax LX which was um, non autofocus but their Pentax flagship camera. It's an amazing camera. I had one many, many years ago and I lost it over the side of a ship in the North Atlantic when I was in the Navy. Um, I'll get another one maybe, but I, you know, it was one of the first cameras I ever owned. Uh, but they are phenomenal cameras. Anyway, anyway. So I was looking for a Pentax MZS, which is literally the last camera, the last professional camera Pentax made, uh, film camera. And while I was in my, my search, I came across another one. It was just um, too much to miss, too much to not buy. So I looked on eBay and there was a camera for £55. It just had the generic picture of the camera and it said untested. So I thought, I'll take a gamble. And what it was, was this. It's the Pentax Z1P, if you can get that in focus. And what this was, this was their autofocus flagship camera that sort of took over from the LX. It was in production for, for quite a few years, probably about 10 years I think it was in production for. There's a small, there's a lower version called the Z1 without the P. And what they did was they they made some soft changes when they made the P version, like putting a spot uh, focus on the back. Anyway, the, so I bought the camera off of eBay and I was really shocked when I got it. Um, I only got it about four years ago because it said untested. The reason it was untested was because it was brand new. It had never been used. It was in the original box, I've got it here. It even came with the tabby thing you pull out. I haven't seen one of these for years. You pull these out of the back when you first get a camera. It had absolutely, it's in absolute perfect condition and I've not taken these out. Look, I could become a member of the um, Pentax Club which is fantastic, and get Pentax magazine. So this has never been used, so this is just an amazing thing to get a camera in sort of like 2020 or whenever I got this, which was absolutely brand new and never been used. So, you know, I did really well for that. Anyway, you know, I'll keep that box safe, but it's a brand new camera. I haven't opened one of those for so long. Anyway, so what is it? So it was their flagship, autofocus camera it's a really comprehensive camera it's got uh, lots of uh, features on it that you would recognize on pentax cameras today I, I shoot normally a pentax k1 digital for my work stuff and there's so much on this that you know is basically built into the k1 um, they had their hyper program modes really really easy way to move around um, between aperture priority and all the different modes that you want. Lots of functions built in. It had like auto zoom, like Minolta. It's a very sturdy camera. And it's, um, you know, it basically will do everything for you. Um, built in flash, we'll have a look at a minute. Very distinctive thing. It's actually got the viewfinder, the, the sort of information area built directly onto the top. You'll see this in a second on the table directly on top of the camera. So they've moved the flash over here, which is quite odd, but it sort of works, doesn't it? Anyway, it's a great camera, this. It's a chunky beast, but it's a really solid, reliable, autofocus camera. I believe these were quite, um, these were desired by the press and people like that. They use them quite a lot. Because obviously I don't think they were as expensive as some of the Nikons, things like that. But they were really reliable. But yeah, so we'll have a look at the table of this one and then, uh, then we come back. Okay, so this is the monstrous Pentax Z1P. And as I mentioned earlier on, you can see they put the, over here, all the information. Normally you'd see it on the camera on the right hand side as an L LCD display. It's dead center, which is right by a pop up flash. So where do you put the flash? Well, what they did was they moved the flash over to this side, which is quite quite interesting actually, to move the flash over to the side of the camera, which is quite handy. 
Anyway, so that's that. So over here you've got a mode dial, a control dial basically, and you basically move it round to what you want to do. So let's change the mode. If I change the mode, I turn the camera on and basically push down on the button, now I can change the mode of the camera. They go manual. Now, unlike other cameras, the way that Pentax did it is really, really clever. They have a thing called hyper program mode, and I'll show you that now. So if say I'm shooting, there we are, and it says TV, which is my shutter speed, 250, but I want to change my shutter speed. What will happen is I can now just change it with the top dial and the camera, camera will carry on shooting. So I'm just basically adjusting it and the aperture will adjust at the same time. Same goes for the back. If I want to change the um, aperture of the camera, I can just roll this dial at the back and it changes it. So you can just jump in and switch your mode to whatever you want to do. Now to get back to like normal program mode, there's a button, an IF button at the back. Press that and everything resets to like defaults. So it's really intuitive, really quick way of like going, oh, I want to do, you know, I want a bit more shallow depth of field. I want it to be a bit quicker. I want the shutter to go a bit quicker. You can just literally roll the wheels and it will happen. You don't have to touch anything else on the camera. Okay, so over here, you've got flash. And this is flash compensation. You can uh, adjust it there. ISO, again, if you push that down, here we go, flash compensation. Look, press that in and you can adjust it. ISO, press that down, you roll the wheel. Hang on, it's splashing a, hum a thousand at the moment. If I change top one, yeah. If I change it now, top wheel, Hang on, hold that down. It'll change it for you. you want to put that back to a thousand. There it is. Then you've got um, sort of rewind there to do a rewind before. PF is all the functions. I'm not going to go through them. There's like tons. The key ones you ever want to find out about is to leave the leader out on the film roll uh, so that you can like develop it yourself. And there's a few other things. How many stops, um, you know, you, how many how many stop increments to stop thirds and stuff like that and then you've got uh, multiple exposures and we're back to drive over here you've got really got a simple on off and user remembers the user settings you put before there is something to say in this pentax did this it's really clever they have a program line mode that reads the data from the lens and if you put in if you have to do it through the um pf functions and what it'll do is it will take it will, when you put it into that program line mode, it will shoot the lens at the best, um, what's the word, it, at its best sort of aperture. So if the lens is like amazing at f4, it'll take it to f4 and then it'll, you know, take a photograph. Okay, so over here, let's have a look. Let's put the lens cap back on. So let's have a look at the back. We've got immediate spot meter function that we can just use and also hit this for, so you hit spot, change it. You can change your, roll the front wheel and you can see, I don't know if you can see the um, tiny little thing there. You've got like a matrix metering type thing, center weighted and spot. So you can very quickly change your exposure mode. Then you've got the plus and minus buttons here for exposure conversation. This slide at the bottom, never touch it, it's panoramic mode. Obviously, panoramic mode is put some shutters down and just crops the top and bottom of your film to make it look filmic. It's a, it's a bit of a waste of time if you think about it, is it? Just buy an X-Pan, a Hasselblad X-Pan if you want to do that kind of that kind of stuff. What else have we got here? Okay, at the bottom, a CR11, CR2s, I can't remember what they're called. And then there's just a, a basically, there's no battery pack for this camera. There was no extension unit to it. So that just literally goes on a tripod. Okay, let's go around to the front, take that off. Over here you've got manual, servo and single. Obviously this is like single focus where you press the button and it locks and stays there. Servo is continuously tracking the subject matter. We've got a little panel in here which probably something to do with a flash, which I don't have any knowledge of. Over here you've got depth of field preview. You see it go there. Then you've got the um, actual lens release. Anything else, Obviously, open the camera up here. Little button here to pop the flash up when you need it. But yeah, I mean, there's like this IF button, this carried on. It became, later became, you'll see it on the MZS. There's a green button on all Pentax cameras, digital cameras. You press this button and it literally resets everything. And you've got a lock button there as well. So that's it, that's the um, 
Pentax Z1P. Um, great, monstrous camera. Okay, so that was the Pentax Z1P. Um, I think you can get them quite cheaply. A really solid, solid camera. Um, if you want an autofocus Pentax camera, get one. They are, they just do the job. I mean, if you, if you want to go out for a day, you've got Pentax lenses. I've got, because I shoot a digital Pentax camera, it's really handy to have one of these in the bags. We just want to shoot some film. So you can, because basically the K mount, which is on these cameras, a KAF mount, all the lenses, the, and they have a very clever thing called catching focus and, um, or, and focus confirmation. Because unlike some of the brands, they, they, they knew people would be using their older lenses. So you can put a, a, a non-autofocus lens on this and basically it'll peep when it's in focus. It'll give you indication that you've got it in focus. So you can shoot all the original Pentax lenses and even some of the modern ones today because a KAF mount, I think even some of the stupid lenses without the aperture rings, um, you can shoot on these things as well. So really clever with Pentax because I'm still using some of their 50 mils from really back in the day on a Pentax K1 today. It's just got focus confirmation. And another thing um, they've got that's catching focus. I mean, I'll do a thing about the Pentax K1 because it's a great camera, but it is a thing where you can take a Pentax K1 with you, then you've got any of your Pentax autofocus cameras or even a Pentax manual and all the lenses work across all of them. Obviously the autofocus lenses won't work on the older cameras, but it's great having one of these, you can shoot some film and then you can uh, switch the lens and put it on the K1 and carry on going. And some of their lenses are fantastic. Their FA ranges are really good. Anyway, that's the Pentax um, Z1P. Really good camera, solid reliable. They're not hugely expensive. If you want a good Pentax autofocus camera, if you've got some Pentax manual cameras. Anyway, thanks for watching.